Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're looking at a problem that combines pretty much everything we've been talking about in the past few weeks. So it combines the idea of the first law, turbines, uh, exergy, entropy, all in one big package, right? And we're bringing back the idea of looking into other forms of energy in this case kinetic energy also plays a role so it's you know, it's a big bundle with everything that we've been learning obviously property tables um steam table analysis and all those things come into play too right so if you're not comfortable with these things yet this is um a big one but if you've been you know if you're on top of everything if you're comfortable with the ideas so far you should be fine let's read the problem statement of problem eight Point fifty-five. Steam enters an adiabatic turbine at 6 megapascals, 600 degrees Celsius, and 80 meters per second, and leaves at 50 kilopascals, 100 degrees Celsius, and 140 meters per second. If the power output of the turbine is 5 megawatts, determine the reversible power output and the second law efficiency of the turbine. Assume the surroundings to be at 25 degrees Celsius. All right, so a lot of lot to do here. Well, we have, you know, adiabatic turbine. That's an indication that this guy here is not going to be, you know, no heat's going to be entering or leaving this system whatsoever. Uh, six megapascals, again, this, you know, this screams superheated, but we're going to check to be sure. They're giving us the velocity, so that's a big red flag, meaning we're not to ignore kinetic energy, right? Um, what else? The other thing, they're giving us the power output. The power output is 5 megawatts, and this is not, um, well, it's not uncommon, but it's not, you know, the most commonly they're asking us to find out the power. When they're giving us the power, you can put a note to yourself, because whenever you're given the power, you probably need to go after the mass, right? And in this case here, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the case, but you can write a note to yourself. If you're given the power, you're probably going to need that to find the mass flow rate that goes through this turbine, all right? We are to find uh, the reversible power, right? So reversible power. And what does that mean? Well, reversible power means the uh, power related to energy, energy per time right um, energy rate and reversible meaning that we're not accounting for any uh, entropy being generated right so it's a system that goes from one state to the second through reversible processes meaning that we're not generating any um, entropy we're not generating irreversibilities as we go okay so it goes back to the idea of comparing a process that's isentropic that is reversible versus one that is not that is real okay and then the second law efficiency we also you know learned about this recently you know a couple of problems on the previous problem that we talked about exergy introduced that concept we talked about that too but it's an idea of efficiency related to how much i could get how much i get out of the real engine compared to how much i would get out of an ideal one that was fully reversible okay so they're giving this to us Right? And they're giving this to us. This is probably another red flag. They're giving surroundings. They want us to think about exergy. Okay, what is the deal here? Well, remember, we've talked about that before, right? Note that we're, you know, our steam is entering at 600 C and leaving at 100 C. Okay, well, the surroundings are at, what was it, 20, 25, 25. The surroundings are 25 degrees C. Okay, so know that theoretically, theoretically, I could have, you know, a second turbine here, second turbine here, through which this steam would enter and it would leave at the um, temperature of the surroundings. That would be, you know, on an, on an ideal case, on an ideal scenario, we could go all the way to the six, from the 600 and the energy re related to that down to the 25. We're not though, right? We're stopping at the 100. Right? So we're not really constrained. There's nothing um, stopping us from going all the way to 25 except for the quality of the energy and how much quality really is on this fluid here 
in comparison to what it could be if we went all the way down to 25, right? So that's when the idea of X30 comes into play. So what will be our game plan here? In order to find the reversible work, in order to find the reversible work, I have two options. I have two ways of finding it. One way is simply calculating, you know, the enthalpy going in. So this guy here, right? The enthalpy of this guy going in, what I'm going to call one for state one, um, minus the enthalpy of what will be an ideal state two, right? So the two S that we call. But to be able to find that, I need to find out what this state two S is and then grab the enthalpy for that guy there. Right, so that's one way to um, do it. But if I want the power, power, I'm going to need to multiply these energy fellas by a mass flow rate. Okay, so what am I missing to do that? Well, I'm missing this guy, and I'm going to be missing this guy. Obviously, um, H1 I don't have yet, but I have it stay completely defined. You know, so I could go ahead and grab that easy peasy. But then these two other things are going to have to find out to be able to calculate this guy here. All right, what's the other option? The other option is the following. I know that um, I have my output, my work output is five megawatts, okay? And I know that my reversible work, my reversible work is simply the work output, the real deal, put it that way, plus whatever I lost in terms of irreversibilities, right? Irreversibilities as generated. And I know, I know, I happen to know this is related to how much it could have gone down to the dead state, down to my surroundings. And I can tell, calculate the entropy being generated here as I go from one state to the next. And I'm going from one state to the next. So one idea here is I can calculate that difference just by doing relating the entropies, the entropy of the second state, the entropy of the first state. So it's two minus S1. Okay, and I can find out what is this guy here. Well, once again, I'm going to need the mass flow rate, so I'm going to need to multiply this guy, right? The mass flow rate. Okay, so I have these two options. I can do this, um, sum up the five megawatts with this value here. That's one way to find the reversible work, or I can do this one here. It's really up to you, whatever you think makes more sense. The numbers will be exactly the same. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and Put down a game plan okay like i noted i'm going to need this fella here i'm going to need this fella here i'm going to need this fella here so i need to grab a lot of stuff to be able to um you know solve this problem so what i need to do is all right i know that if i do a little energy balance on this um turbine let me do this let me draw the little turbine here turbine and i have um enthalpy one going into here i have work out coming out of here, I have enthalpy two coming out, right? So if I do a little energy balance and I need to account for the kinetic energy going in two, so kinetic energy of one, I need to account for kinetic energy of two. And then I see that everything is going in, these guys are going in, and these three are going out, right? So energy balance the balance dictates that one plus kinetic energy one will be equal to two plus kinetic energy two plus the work output, okay? And I can use that because I happen to know what is the um, the rate, right? So I probably should have included, let me include here. Change in kinetic energy, right? Just to make it precise. Um, so what I can do here is since I know what the rate is, right, I know that work out as a rate is simply the energy multiplied by the mass flow rate, I can use that to my advantage because, check out this out, check this out, the flow divided by the mass flow will be the energy, right? And if this is the case, check out, I can plug this guy in there, right? So I can plug this here, and then I'm going to have as my unknown I'm going to have the mass flow rate, which is what I'm looking for, right? This off the table, this I can calculate, this I can calculate, this off the table. The th this was given the problem statement. My unknown becomes the mass flow rate. Okay, so that's the idea here. That's my, my game plan. Uh, let me go ahead and copy this. Copy this.
here and I'm going to paste this where I have the work out right so this allows me to calculate uh, things so what's the game plan game plan is let's grab the properties let's grab this this um, calculate these guys this I already have so I can calculate the mass flow rate um, of this whole system then to be able to find the um, reversible work be able to find reversible work I need to know the 2s and for the 2s I need to know the entropy I already know uh, some other properties but I need to know the entropy of state 2s so I'm going to know that state entropy of state 2s has to be the same as state 1 right no entropy lost so therefore um, I can go ahead and calculate that the other option is I can grab the s1 plus and I can also grab s of 2 actual and then I can calculate the difference of enthalpies from one to the other it's up to you whatever you think makes more sense all right I'm going to go with this idea because I think it's going to be useful for us to talk about exergy, right? Because if you remember, exergy is the following. We have, let me, can, how can we draw this? Uh, we have state one, so let's put it down here. We have state one, energy, right? Energy. Just a measurement of energy. And we have our state one, right? And then we have our state two, actual, where we're actually dropping to. And we have our dead state, um, D S for dead state, right? So that's the environment. And if I'm drawing, dropping from here to here, I'm going to get a certain amount of energy. If I'm dropping from here to here, I'm going to get a higher amount of energy, right? The amount of energy from here to here is like this much, and the other one is like this much. Okay. And then considering that, what we can see is that the ch the difference between the two, that is this much, this much here, right? The difference between the two. That guy there is work, the um, energy related to the irreversibility at a loss, right? So this guy here is the blue one is related to work, um, work out. Okay, this green one here is work reversible, and then this red here would be you know work um, IR irreversible. Or actually, I should probably put this as. Um, work related to S gen, the entropy generator.